今天我继续爱讲的思想，咱的圣经第四段引导内面的信息。This morning I would like to continue to reflect with you on the book of Acts。今天你讲第六篇的信息是，对吗？是耶稣的名。My sixth message on the book of Acts is the name of Jesus。经文是四段引导第四九、第九到三十一章。The scriptural passage will be in Acts four five to thirty one。第第三九是记载初期教会头一个胜利。The third chapter was a record of the first miracle of the early church. Peter, 约翰奉主名，以后这个出世是白开人。Peter and John, in the name of God, was able in the name of God was able to heal a crippled beggar. 结果彼得起来讲道。And this time, Peter stood up to preach a message. 过千的男的信主。There were five thousand men who received Christ. 这是教会一个真扎道的复兴，真扎道的成绩。This was a record of a revival in the early church. But because of it. 多嚟教会投资班，好公开公开嘅逼迫。But because of this success, it was also the cause for the persecution of the early church. 苏多第四九九九十二节，即二十六节嘅经文里面，就是呢个攻击嘅内容。It, Acts four five to thirty one, the the verses records the persecution of the early church. 你嗱注意这二十六节嘅经文嘅内面。If you know, take note of the twenty six verses in this passage. 里面有沙洲嘅人嘅内面。There are three groups of people here. 头一个 group 是公会嘅人。The first group is the Sanhedrin people. 是代表瓜雕、条路、文书、大祭司。This represents the rulers, elders, teachers of the law, and the high priests. 第二 group 嘅人是苏多。The second group are the apostles. 是彼得及约翰。Here we have Peter and John. 而第三 group 嘅人是教会。The third group is the church. 你嗱注意这三群嘅人讲来讲去，只讲一项大事。You will notice that all three groups of people talk about just one thing. 讲到 the name of Jesus. They talked about the name of Jesus. 你嗱先读几则圣经，我哋知啊，嗬。Let's take a look at a few verses too. 第七则。Verse seven. 教书徒徛喺嘅中间就问伊讲：你用什么灵力？奉神嘅名，就这样代志。They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them by what power or what name did you do this? 这是公会人所讲嘅话。These are the words of the Sanhedrin. 第十七 ，verse ten。你正人及以色列百姓拢知呀，徛在你嘅头前，这个人你就异地，因为你所定时嚟嘅上帝叫一堆死嚟讲话，拉撒拉人耶稣基督嘅名。Then know this, you and all the people of Israel. It is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom Christ raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. This is Su Da Gong Wei. These are the words of the apostle. Look at the chapter ten, verse twelve. 对对，读了伊伊话，无别的名，因为伫天下人间，无数落别的名，难会得到。The apostle continues. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. This is so do I way. This is another statement of the apostle. Verses seventeen to eighteen. You say, "Can't hear this kind of thing. Let's talk about it. 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 Verse seventeen to eighteen. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. This is 公会讲嘅话 This is the voice of the Sanhedrin. You got the 二十九九三十七 Verses twenty nine to thirty. 伊就哼伊讲，现在伊哼音，现在求主嚟监察，将命叫你仆人多。帮打量讲嘢度，将命伸出你嘅手嚟，以地破壁，并且好胜劣其数，因为你圣仆耶稣名嘅出嚟。The verses read: Now the Lord consider your threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. This is 教会嘅祈祷。This is the prayer of the church. 你要注意哦，这三个白人。讲来讲去，一个中心，讲到 the name of Jesus。The central theme of their words is the name of Jesus。但是每一个 group 嘅人嘅重点都无同。Each group has a different purpose in articulating the name of Jesus。共和党伫对抗主嘅名。The Sanhedrin they were opposing the name of Jesus。伊无完全教会疏导个红主嘅名去传道。They wouldn't allow the church, the members, to spread the word of God in Jesus' name。疏导伫高举主嘅名。Apostles were lifting high the name of the Lord. They said, "Without the name of Jesus, there is no other name by which you can have salvation." 
The church was calling in the name of Jesus. That's why they say, Lord, please extend your hand and help those who are sick. Prove your, prove your truth. Various groups of people they have various responses to the name of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, may I ask you a question? In the name of Jesus, every time you take the name of Jesus, what does it mean to you? How significant is it? The name of Jesus is Every time you mention the name of Jesus, how are we supposed to act on and react to the name of Jesus? In this verse, 26 verses, there are two crucial things that I want to talk about. These two things are what the church needs to face up. Number one, First, one, first matter, we must courageously lift high the name of the Lord Jesus. From verses 5 to 22, let's take a look at the, the verses that you may you may know what it's all about. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas the high priest was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and others of the high priest family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them, By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, If we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame, and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone your builders, you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were un astonished, and they took note that this man had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What are we going to do with this man? They asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they have performed a notable sign and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, Which is right in God's eyes? To listen to you or to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. After further threats, they let them go. They could not decide how to punish them because all the people were praising God for what has happened. For the man who was miraculously healed was over 40 years old. Thank you. Let's take note of verse 5. Let's take note the rulers, the elders, teachers of the law, priests, and high priests. These are the so-called social elites of the society. You will position. They have positions. You will grant bank. They have authority. You will give They have money. You will say that. They have influence. Now they had the apostles stand before them and ask them a question. By whose name and by whose power did you do this miracle? In this particular question, there are two things you need to understand. Number one. Number one, members of the Sanhedrin admitted this is a miracle. They, that's something they cannot deny. This person who was born crippled is already 40 years old. Every day he was being dropped there for him to beg alms. Members of the Sanhedrin, they were, they were going to the church every day. Every day they saw the person. They probably give alms to the particular person. That's why they cannot deny it. They admitted it. it's a miracle. But, However, they however refuse to admit that this is from God. In your heart of hearts, your question remains who, by whose power did you do this? Their answer could be this must be by the power of the devil. 
After the apostle heard that, the apostles were pretty quiet. When they needed to talk, there's absolutely no reason to stay silent. They stood up and defended the name of Christ. In the presence of the multitude, in the presence of the people in power, they exalted the name of the Lord Jesus. As they exalt the name of Jesus, two things you need to know. Number one, the apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit when they lifted high the name of the Lord. Verse 8. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, What does it mean to be filled with the Spirit? It's to be managed by the Holy Spirit. Your lives need to be managed by someone. Either by the ego or by You must, you need to reduce your ego and replace it with the power of God. Before Jesus was crucified, Jesus had to remind the disciples this important truth. Mark 13, 11. Jesus told his disciples Whenever you are arrested and brought to trial Do not worry beforehand about what to say Just say whatever is given at you at the time For it is not you speaking but the Holy Spirit It's not telling you to be thoughtless Or not to think about what you're going to say Every time you are confronted with persecution you, you need to be praying quietly that the Spirit of God may fill you enough so that you will know what the right thing to say. A very good example in the Bible is recorded in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2. This is uh, recorded in the book of Nehemiah, chapter 2. Nehemiah desires to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild the wall. He prayed and prayed. Chapter 2, verse 1. In chapter 2, verse 1, this time the king Artaxerxes asked him a question. Nehemiah, he said, Nehemiah, what do you want? What did the Bible say? Nehemiah, it, it was recorded Nehemiah prayed to God. The prayer then was a silent prayer. That means to say it wasn't an articulated prayer. Because this time he didn't have time to pray. Now the king asked him, What's your request? He, he, doesn't have the, he didn't have the time to say, Wait for me, I'll go and pray. No, no, no. It's no chance. There's no way he could do because that. Because this particular king is not a believer. If I ask you, then you have to answer. The Bible said, It's recorded, Nehemiah prayed silently. And then immediately there's this prayer from his heart. It could be as simple as, Lord, help me. Then he said his answer. After he said the answer, no problem. the king approved and said, no problem. The apostles are, exact, are besieged with exactly the same situation. When the people in power ask him, by whose power did you do this? The Spirit filled them. The apostle began to articulate very important statements. What are they? The apostles lifted high the name of the Lord in truth and in courage. Take note. Verse 9 to 12. If we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. These are the statements of the apostle. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the 
cornerstone. This is a important statement. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. This statement is crucial. Let me explain. This is after what the apostle said. In verses 13 to 14. This was the 13 to 14 was the response of the Sandy Dream. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that this man had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. Take note the first phrase of verse 13. When they saw the courage of Peter and John, it recorded they saw the courage of Peter and John. They saw with their own eyes the courage of Peter and John. And in verse 14, the last phrase, there was nothing they could say. There was nothing they could say. They are speechless. In verses 9 to 12, we see the truth that the apostles used. Verses 13 to 14, we saw the courage of the apostles. What truth are we talking about here? They say, Jesus is the cornerstone. Jesus is the very cornerstone that you rejected in the first place. It was uh, taken, it was an, an allusion to Psalm 18, uh, verse 12. The apostles are very familiar with the Bible. That's why they, he used God's word to rebuke those people. What does it mean that Jesus is the cornerstone that you rejected in the first place? During Jesus' time, during the Old Testament time, before you build a structure, you they need to find a first-rate stone to be the cornerstone. Foundation. It is just like our current day foundation. It seems like it's an ordinary piece of stone, this cornerstone. But a person who has the expertise will immediately determine what kind of a stone this piece of stone is. Jesus is a piece of cornerstone. But many people are spiritually blind. They could even reject that lovely piece of cornerstone and crucified him on the cross. How do you call that? It's just like failing to see despite having eyesight. You have the ability to see but you, you cannot see. To give you a um, further example, I'll tell you, I'll cite a Chinese historical story. It's a story of the jade called He Shipi. During the spring and autumn period of China, there's a person by the name of Bian He discovered a very an immense stone. This person has the as the expert. He was able to see through this ordinary stone and see a precious jade with it. So that time he brought the stone and went to the country Chu and then gave it to the, the emperor. So this emperor by the name of Li. Sorry. He brought his own courtly artisan to look at it. After this ex so called expert looked at it, he went back to the king and said, It is just an ordinary piece of stone. The king was enraged. You deceived me. So he called this particular uh, person who discovered. They say, Okay, as a punishment, amputate. Uh, his left leg. After this Li emperor died, there's another one who succeeded him called Wu. The same person gave the same piece of stone to the next emperor. And then this Wu emperor looked at it and called courtesan, artisan, I mean, to check it. The same answer. It's just an ordinary stone. It's not a precious stone. The emperor who was enraged, they called him. This time, 
you amputate his right leg as a punishment. So now that his right leg, left leg, both amputated. After Emperor Wu died, another uh, king came up, it's Emperor Wen. And then this person actually embraced this particular stone and wept profusely for three days and three nights. This time, the uh, Emperor Wu was a little, find him a little ridiculous. Why are you uh, in grief? Then he told this new emperor about the story. The so this emperor one called the artisan. No, no, no exam. No examination. This time they broke the stone apart. And then they found this priceless treasure of a jade inside that stone. In honor of the discoverer, it's called He Shibi. It was taken after the name of the person who discovered it. Isn't this same phenomenon we have? Same phenomenon we have of Christ. Every many people see Jesus as just an ordinary person. They reject Jesus. They reject Jesus. When we preach the gospel to people, in fact, people laughed at us. Because they cannot see the treasure therein. They cannot see that in this, beneath this ordinary stone, there lies a priceless treasure. Jesus is our priceless treasure. The apostles are very courageous. He was actually rebuking the people in Sanhedrin. Jesus is the cornerstone you rejected. He said, Jesus is the cornerstone that you actually rejected. The apostles use the truth to rebuke those people wrong. Not only that, the apostles also exemplified uh, courage in rebuking these people. The apostles said, he said, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Take note. No other name under heaven given to mankind. It says, No other name under heaven given to mankind. By which we must be saved. By which we must be saved. There is no other way except through Jesus where you will find salvation. The apostle is actually challenging the authority of the Sanhedrin. It's just like saying, even you, if you don't believe in Christ, you also go to hell. Unless you have that kind of a courage, you won't be able to say a single sentence. I remember during the 16th century, the Martin Luther gave reform. This is the father of Reformation, uh, Martin Luther. He was asked to stand before a tribunal, and he said, "Okay, Martin Luther said, Unless I'm convinced by the scriptures, I am bound by the scriptures I have quoted, and my conscience is captive to the word of God. I cannot and will not recant anything. May God help me. May God help him. This is a supreme act of courage. Brothers and sisters, when we want to exalt and lift up the name of Christ, we need the truth. We need the courage. There's a disheartening piece of news from mainland China. I'm sure um, many of you heard about it. It's, a, it's about a two year old boy. Is run over by two vehicles. The first one hit him. The second one hit him again. Twice. That's a two year old boy. He was there um, lying on the ground. Uh, it's full of blood. The question is this. 
Based on the record, there were 18 persons who passed by. Not a single one extended the helping hand. That's 18 people. In the end, uh, the boy died. Actually, it enraged and the, 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 the people in China. A lot of people say that you don't, you don't have sympathy, empathy, you don't care people, you are When I looked at the, when I take a look at the news, I was also grieved. It's uh, pitiful. But I asked myself this question. Now he did. If on that day, if I were the 19th person to have passed by this boy, would I save that boy? How about if you were the 19th person to pass by that boy? Would you uh, help out this boy? It's not as easy as that. This person is filled with blood. Would you be able to carry him? We don't want problems. It's your problem, not mine, we always say. We don't want to interfere. Because we know that by doing that, we may just be dragged into one, one pool of water. This world, it's very much like that. People are egocentric. One person passed by after the other. If I were the 19th person, would I help him? You not need not only a lot of love, but you also need a lot of courage. I cannot continue to think about it. I find it a little unimaginable already. Because I know I may not be able to do that. How about you? If you were the 19th person, what would you do? It is no easy matter. It's easy to judge somebody. But if you were in that person's place, you probably won't be, would be, able, won't be able to do it. If you want to exalt the name of Jesus, it's easy to say it. Unless you have the courage, you'll not be able to articulate it. May God help us that we may have a heart of courage. Christianity is a very courageous religion. The apostles were very bold. Unless through Jesus Christ there is no other salvation. If you don't believe in Christ, you won't be saved. Unless you have a first class courage, you wouldn't be able to say any of those statements. In Taiwan, Taiwan there's this particular religion. It's, uh, it's like an ecumenical religion. There are five religions in this particular one big religion. It's Confucianism, Taoism, Buddhism, Christianity, and Islam all in one. And I'm sure it's just like the Filipino halo halo. You mix everything up. This particular religion is all embracing. If you believe in Jesus, no problem. If you want to worship Buddha, it's fine. If you believe in Christ, no problem. You want ancestor ancestor worship, it's okay. Why is that? Because as they look at it, Jesus is actually the same person as everybody else. That's why it's five religions in one. But but this is not a religion of salvation. The Bible made it very clear. Other than the name of Jesus, there is no other salvation. This is an, a word of courage. Brothers and sisters, how are we supposed to react and respond to the name of Jesus? We need to exalt His name. We exalt it with our truth, with truth and courage. Number two. Second. We must testify for the name of the Lord. From verses 23 to 31. On their release, Peter and John went back to their own people and reported 
that the chief priests and the elders had said to them. When they heard this, they raised their voices together in prayer to God. Sovereign Lord, they said, You made the heavens and the earth and the sea and everything in them. You spoke by the Holy Spirit through the mouth of your servant, our father David. Why do the nations rage and the people plot in vain? The kings of the earth rise up and the rulers band together against the Lord and against his anointed one. Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in the city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. Now, Lord, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak your word with great boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal and perform signs and wonders through the name of your holy servant Jesus. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Twenty-third verse, when the apostles were being released. They went back to their own people. The statement reads, when they went back to their own people. They went back to the same group of people. What does it mean? This statement is meaningful. So it went back to their own people. What does it mean to went back to their own people? So it they go back to the church. Church is not a building. Church is actually a group of people being called out by God. When the apostles were released, they went back to their own so called home. That's why a church is actually a home for the believers. When we have difficulties, when we have problems, we, where do we go back to? Went back to their own people. You go back to your own people. When you're hurt, where do you go? We went back to the own people. You go back to your own people. The church is a big family. It's a family where you can go back to and enjoy that kind of serenity. On that same place, they called on the name of the Lord in unity. This looks simple. And it's not easy. Call on the name of the Lord in unity. This is the second time it said they called on the name of the Lord in unity. Where was it the first time? The Acts chapter 1. It's in Acts chapter 1. It's in Acts chapter 1. Then there were 120 members who prayed that the, the Holy Spirit descend upon them. This time, 120 people prayed in unity. It's not easy. You know how many people there are? In a church, probably has 8,000, 10,000 members. For 10,000 members to pray in unity, maybe not all people are there, but the Bible said, they call on the name of the law in unity. This time, in this uh, verse 4, uh, chapter 4, it said, they call the name of Jesus, Lord, in unity. This is an era of egocentrism. It's not easy to be united with someone. 10,000 people praying in unity. You can't find that. It's impossible. But the Bible says, However, in Psalm 133, verse 1, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. May God help our church. No matter how many we are, we pray in unity. We pray that we may pray together in unity. The church is a place of unity. When the church joined hearts, they pray to God. What did they pray? Number one, number one, these people pray that the Lord may give them boldness to preach the word. The Sanhedrin had already made its pronouncement. You shall not preach by the name of Jesus again. If you do, you actually violated the law of the church. Here's an important matter that you need to figure out. It's about committing a crime and sinning. 
Committing a crime doesn't automatically mean you sin. When you sin, it doesn't mean you automatically commit a crime. What does it mean? Brothers and sisters, we Christians must be exemplary citizens of the world. You get it? You must remember. You must be the best. You must be the best. You're not supposed to commit a sin. You're not supposed to commit a crime either. But committing a crime and committing a sin are two different matters. Committing a crime is to violate the law. Committing a sin is violating God. If possible, we don't commit a crime, we don't commit a sin. But if there is one day, we hope that it won't happen. When the, when the, when the law of the land, for example, forbids us from reading the Bible, forbids us from praying, forbids us from spreading the gospel, if you do it, for example, they would say it's a crime. If you, if you don't do it, however, it's a sin. If you are on this particular threshold, then in this particular kind of a crossroad, it's better to commit that crime instead of committing that sin. Why? In the Bible, it was written. It is much more dreadful to be fallen to fall in the hands of God. Our God is a consuming fire. God is consuming fire. Who do you want to submit yourself to? Would you rather be committed in the hands of God? Or that we may have a heart of reverence. We, the church, have the authority of Christ and God. We need to submit to it with courage. Because he's a fearful God as well. May God help us. After the break, they ask him to give him courage to preach the word. Second, they ask the Lord to continue to perform miracles through the Lord's name. Take note. First prayer. God, give us courage. Second prayer. God, continue to perform miracles. What does it mean? In simple words, it's a cooperation between God and man. If I go and preach the gospel, you perform the God miracle. By the performance of a miracle, it will prove the truth of the truth. Remember, gospel is a cooperation between God and man. It's not simply a matter of human affairs. It's not simply God's affair. It is God and man in cooperation. That's why in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 it says, You are the partner, you are partnership with God. You are bond, you are partners of Christ. May God help the church that we may cooperate in with God. Verse 31, after the prayer, this is the result. After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. Three results. Result number one. Result number one. Result number one. Number one. Three, three, four, three, three. The place was shaken. Is it a coincidence that after the prayer there was an earthquake? And then that's why the, the earth was shaken. I don't think so. The place was shaken is a, is a symbol, indication that God is there. Every time God indwells in something, you notice there's always a phenomenon of a shaking. In the Old Testament, when God, indu God descended to Mount Sinai, there was a shaking. In Exodus 20. In Exodus 20. Mount Sinai was shaken up. That was the dissension of uh, Holy Father. 
Acts chapter 2 in Acts chapter 2 when the Holy Spirit descended, the upper room, the upper room was entirely shaken. Because the Holy Spirit was there. Jesus said, and Jesus said, those uh, in the church, even two to three people, they gathered in my name. I shall be with you. When you join together in prayer, the power of Christ shall indwell among you. Second, the second result, the disciples were filled with the Holy Spirit. Take note. Acts chapter 2, this time, Acts chapter 2, the when the Holy Spirit descended, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 4. In Acts chapter 4. When the apostles were being judged by the people, the Holy Spirit. That says, it says that apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit. The disciple was filled with the Spirit. Now that they go back to their own church, they, the disciples were likewise filled with the Holy Spirit. And you'll notice that the filling of the Holy Spirit is not a one-time event. It's one after the other. It's a continuous act. Continuously, it is a progressive act of being filled by the Spirit. It's not a one-time event. When the Holy Spirit is within you, it is not a once a year event of filling you. But sometimes you refuse to be managed by the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit to control you, to fill with you. You need to open your hearts to, for the Holy Spirit to continue to fill you on a continuous sense. When the, when the cycle of goodness, the more filled we are with the Holy Spirit, the more power we have, the more victorious we are. We call it the cycle of goodness. The cycle. The cycle. This time it's the cycle of power. They have victory. As you have more victory, there's more filling. It's a cycle. And the cycle goes on. On the contrary, if the Holy Spirit is not is without you, it's not in you. Nature, ego, without the Holy Spirit, your ego actually fills you. To be this time you are filled by your ego, your fear, worry, arrogance, conceit, and insecurity. And then now you will experience more arrogance, more conceit, worry, and fear. Multiple choice. It, lo it looks like a multiple choice. Which do you want to be filled with? Do you want to be filled with the Spirit? Or do you want to be filled by your carnal nature? This is your choice. This is your choice. Third, what does the Bible say? The result is the disciples spoke the word of God boldly. May I ask you a question? Does it mean that after the prayer, does it mean that after the prayer they suddenly turn very courageous? They become very fearless. It's just like a famous uh, obedient husband. It's a famous obedient husband. After prayer, he, he became so bold he wouldn't submit to the wife. He gave her a slap. Is it does it mean that? I don't think so. After their prayer, I believe they are still afraid. Because this time they are facing the entire Sanhedrin and the nation of Israel. But in the midst of fear, by God's grace, they are able to go out. When they go out, 
Through miracles, God was with them. Thus, they become bolder and bolder in preaching the word of God. It's, the, it's just like what Mark 16, 20 said. Then the disciples went out and preached everywhere, and the Lord worked with them and confirmed His word by the signs that accompanied it. We usually have a misperception about courage. We thought that to be courageous is to be fearless completely. No, 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 no. That's not so. True courage is not the absence of fear. True courage is not backing out despite having fear. That's real courage. Lately, I have been dealing with uh, very overwhelming problems in the church. I have I was faced with immense pressure. Then you can see my hair thinning. But within these two months of immense pressure, there were two things that edified me. The first saying goes, Tough times never last, but tough people do. What sustained me was, Tough times never last, but tough people do. It's actually the title of a book. It's a very good book. If you have time, go and read it. Tough times they, they, will, they shall pass But tough people they shall persist Second saying Three more days, three more days. What does it mean? I, well, there was a time when I was reading this book There's a story therein It's an old elderly woman She's a flower vendor from the, way, uh, you look, from the way she looks, you know that she's poor. But when you look at her face, it's full of joy. Quite a contradiction, her face and the way she, her, her condition. When you look at her face, she looks happy. When you look at the way she wears her dress, you know that she's poor. And in, there was that one day the reporter asked her, It seems like you're in besieged with an enormous economic financial problem, but you look very happy. And then she replied, She said, When Jesus was crucified, that day was the darkest time of life. But after three days, Jesus was resurrected from the dead. After three more days, three more days, things shall be okay. Why do I need to worry? Three more days. The phrase is three more days. May God help us. Whatever problem we are confronted with, let's persist. As long as we stand on the basis of God's truth. Things shall pass. Brothers and sisters, how are we supposed to respond to the name of Jesus? We say Jesus' name is precious. Have we actually done anything in order to make that precious name exalted? Have we done anything to testify to that priceless name? May God help us. In the name of Jesus, go down overcome Jin Quinkum
，好来求告你家己的道名为主，最更加好嘅见证。感谢上帝，我今集记这个时间，谦卑的你头前来学习，将你为康德军正人嘅心来，当人嘅声音结束以后，上帝啊，圣灵嘅声音结束在我嘅心内来做工，我今得到激励，得到挑战。来面对滚沙落去一个礼拜的生活，祈祷感恩，靠主耶稣基督的性命，阿门。